Good day, everyone. This is the second part of responsibility accounting that we have discussed prior. Make sure to watch the first part of this session, which talked about the responsibility centers, the definitions, and the classifications, of course. We've also had the transfer price as well as the balance scorecard definition and the components. So now we will continue with this specific discussion with the same source. You can see here the responsibility reports for cost centers. These are just samples of reports for both cost and profit centers. Now, you can notice that as we go along the way, the reports are being cascaded from the bottom to the top of the organization. And normally that's how it goes. Like reports are being forwarded from the bottom, lower level to the upper level. And then we can notice that those at the bottom will have more detailed information and that this will be summarized as we go higher with a certain business or a said organization. So this is an example, a report to supervisor of workstation 106, the drill press. And these are the components of the cost for materials, direct labor, supervision, power supplies, and miscellaneous, and the totals. Then we can notice we have the current month and year to date. Current month, this is the present month. While year to date is the combination of all the months available. And then this is the budget. And this would be the over or under. Now, the budget is going to be the standard. So that's what we would like to achieve. That's our target or quota or benchmark. Then if ever it's going to be over, so this basically means that our budget exceeds the actual, which is actually good or great, or actual is greater than the budget, which is not good for the business. So that is unfavorable or that is going to be underapplied if we use the terms normally like used here. So to summarize, I would like to repeat that the budget is the quota or standard or benchmark. And then we are going to compare budget with the actual. If budget is actually greater than the actual or actual is lower than the budget, then that basically means that that is over applied. So budget is over applied to the operations of the business and that is favorable. On the other hand, if it is under applied, so this means that the actual is greater than the budget or the budget is lower than the actual costs and expenses. So that is going to be unfavorable and that is under applied. So here we also have the year to date, meaning that is whatever month that is, that's in February. So that's going to be the combination of January and February. If this is now March, it's a combination from January, February, and March, and so on. And then we can actually also see here that if positive, that's over applied, or that is over absorbed in some sources or books. And then if it is over applied or over absorbed, again, that's favorable if under applied or under absorbed that is unfavorable over is positive for the variances and then unfavorable or under applied is negative here variances by the way again is the difference between the actual and the budgeted amounts or figures so from here we report now to the supervisor or publication department then here are now the different stations in the publication department 106, 107, and 108. Here are also the budgeted amounts, current month and year to date, and then the variances similar to what we have a while ago. Then as continued, these are also the departmental costs or common costs which are applicable to the previous three working stations, 106, 7, and 8. Then also, these are like the balances current and year to date, then budgeted and over or under. Then we report now from the different workstations to the fabrication department supervisor, now to the manager in which the manager will be handling a lot of departments. And then just like also for the factory supervisor for fabrication that there are common costs, we can also see this for the general factory cost for the overall manager. All right, so that was for cost center. Now we have the profit centers. So report 
refers to product manager appliances of European region. We have to check because this is profit center. So we will be seeing like the net income if that is even applicable here. But because the focus is about like what margin a certain product or groups of products or line of products would really contribute. So we have here the different details from sales, variable cost, we have production, selling, administrative. Then these are the total variable costs and the difference would be contribution margin. The difference between contribution margin and the direct fixed cost, which are the fixed costs traceable to the products actually are the product margin. So these are the margins specific to the products. Now, these items will be reported to manage the European region. So in the European region, we'll be able to see the different profit margins of the different products, total product margins, then the regional expenses common to all, and this would be the regional margin now, original profit. Okay, so the profit margins here are the product margins, by the way. So remember to get the profit margins or product margins at this part, which could be confusing, that was contribution margin less our direct fixed costs. So those fixed costs, which are not direct or indirect or common to all product lines, if deducted from the product margins, you will get the profit for the company net income, regional level. Then from region, we have to report now to the executive vice president and the executive vice president would be seeing the regions, European, Asia, North American, less the corporate expenses. So overall now common to all regions, we now have the different regional or overall margins. Okay, so those are the items. Learning points there again would be that at a certain level, we would say that certain costs are common. So let's say if we start from the station, of course, the cost of the other stations are not yet common if we talk about the station level. But if we go a step higher, just like for the factory supervisor, now there will be costs common to all stations. And if we go higher again, we have the manager, these are now, or there are going to be costs, or there will be costs which will be common to all the departments. And just like also with the profit center, so we can notice, I want to go back, we can notice actually that from the profit centers, we have here the direct fixed cost deducted from contribution margin or CM to get the PM or product margin. Now we have common costs which are common to all product lines, appliances, industrial equipment, and tools. And there are also common costs if we go now to the overall company level which are common to all regions, European, Asia, and North American. And these are the corporate expenses. I would say bottom line that the determination of the cost and expenses as common or not will depend upon the point of reference. So it's important, like, where are we sitting? Where are we analyzing at? So that we would be able to know, like, which costs are common or not. Then here are our analysis or ways of analyzing the contribution margin variance. Variance, again, is the difference between the actual and budgeted. Okay, so... We have to take note that profit would depend upon a lot of factors. So profit would depend upon selling prices, which if multiplied with the sales volumes, will get the total sales. If sales volume is constant, if there would be changes in selling prices, so of course contribution margin would change and profit would change. If there would be changes in the volumes with the same price, so profits would also change. And if there would be changes in the costs, so profit would change then budgeted and actual profits really coincide because of again expectations and differences of prices volume and cost the opposite cost volume and the profits i would say which will be tackled in the next chapter to plan and to evaluate previous decisions managers need to know the sources of variances this is very true we need to be able to know like what causes the differences of the actual and the budgeted or the target so that we will be able to identify 
like which areas we should improve to next time that we now do the planning and we now implement the things that we have planned in our operations. Okay, so, all right, so beginning with the contribution margin variance, we have actually here units at 20,000 with $20, this would be the selling price, and unit variable cost of $12. And then four ton actually sold 21,000 units at $19. So this is our target expectation, our quota or budget or standard. And this is our actual. So if we talk about the amount, if we multiply, simply multiply, that's 400,000. If we multiply, that's 299,000. So we get a difference of negative 1,000 for sales, which is unfavorable because our actual is lower than our target. 1,000 times 12, that's 240,000. And 21,000 multiplied by 12. So that's going to be 252,000. There is lacking two here. I mean, unfavorable to the company. So how come? Because the amount 252,000 is basically lower than the standard or budget. So this actually means that we incurred more than what we have expected or targeted. So that's why it is going to be negative. And overall contribution margin is negative 13,000. So this means unfavorable to the company on the sense that our targeted contribution margin is 160,000, but then what we have in the actual operations is just 147,000. Okay, so unfavorable could be a word that is mouthful or favorable, especially if we are enunciating it in a fast way or manner. Anyhow, so this is now our sales volume variance. The sales volume variance is going to be the difference between the contribution margin the company would have earned selling the budgeted number of units. So the budgeted number of units at the budgeted unit contribution margin. So basically, this is the budgeted contribution margin. Then, and the contribution margin it would have earned selling the actual number of units at the budgeted unit contribution margin. So basically, there's just a difference between the actual and number of the units that is budgeted. So that's why we can see here on this formula that the sales volume variance is budgeted contribution margin per unit. Then we have to multiply that with the difference between the actual and budgeted. That's what I've said. This is just a matter of the difference between the actual number of units sold and the budgeted number of units to be sold or expected. So that is why. We got the difference that's negative 1,000 or if we do the reverse, I started with budgeted by the way. So if we do the reverse, that's actual minus budgeted. So that's 1,000 units or units greater of actual versus budgeted. So this is favorable to the company. And then 1,000 times 8, so $8,000 sales volume variance which is something that is favorable in the sense that our actual number of units sold is greater than what we have expected or budgeted, all right? So that's sales volume, which actually I like skipped to that part prior to that because I was about to discuss the contribution margin variance prior to sales volume variance. Anyway. Next is sales price. So if, let's go back so that we can recall. So if contribution margin is difference in terms of the contribution margin, then sales volume is the difference of the number of units. While the sales price variance is the difference of the price. So you can see here, this is the difference between the actual total contribution margin. And then that's going to be dictated by the actual price and the total contribution margin expected which is based on the budgeted price take note that our basis here is the actual units sold so that's why it is at 21,000 then the difference is 
one. This is favorable because our respective price, we have this variance here because our actual price is lower than our budgeted price. So this means that we have priced our products lower than what we have expected or targeted. So that's going to be a negative one times 21,000 and that's why that is 21,000 and favorable. Now going back in the sales volume, remember we mentioned this is 8,000 favorable. So 8,000 positive, then plus negative 21,000 equals negative 13,000 or 13,000 and favorable, which is also the case here. So bottom line, the contribution margin variance is actually the sum or the combination of our sales volume variance and our sales price variance. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Next, cost allocations and responsibility reports. We have to allocate some costs which are common to different departments. So examples of this would be for operating departments which are directly related to production or manufacturing of products. So there are some instances wherein they would be getting certain costs from the other departments. Operating departments, for example, in a retail company serve customers directly. So they would be like selling the products, assisting the customers for the sales. Well, the service departments are those departments which are like doing staff or support functions of those who are in the operations or those departments that are in the main line of the business are to be assisted by those in the service department. So let's say human resources, accounting, building security. We can also have information technology or IT department. We also have the purchasing. We have for some, let's say there is logistics, there is research and development, and many other departments which are doing staff or support functions. So the cost of these service departments may be allocated to the operating departments then. Most especially if they are receiving some sort of services from the service departments or the service centers. So that is the point why there would be cost allocations on responsibility reports. Then arguments against allocating indirect fixed costs. Indirect fixed costs against or versus the direct fixed cost is that indirect fixed costs are not traceable to certain products or departments or our point of reference or basis, while direct fixed costs are really traceable from the word direct to certain departments or products or cost drivers or whatever basis or point of reference there would be. First point, because indirect fixed costs are not controllable by the users, allocating them violates the principles of controllability. So that's the argument. Just because the costs are of course fixed and then they are indirect so they are common to certain departments that we are now going to allocate them to the different departments so according to this point of view that is a violation of controllability well in terms of controllability or something that can be controlled by the department that is for the direct fixed cost so why are they receiving allocation well it is because these costs are common to all that's why that should be allocated. Anyway, I'm now trying to make a point for the allocation because this is the argument against it. So I'm saying what is something in favor of it. Second is including allocated costs on performance reports could lead to poor decisions because managers will treat the cost as differential. Well, it is because they are not directly traceable to the department. So that's why if they will be included, so that would result to misanalyzed or that would result to, let's just say, poor decision making or let's just say that the performance done in terms of the measurement of such or let's just say the performance management systems in terms of evaluating the performances of the managers would not be something that is fair to these particular managers. As said, these costs will be treated as a differential. If 
you have recalled relevant costing or short-term non-routine decisions, which was our topic before. So you can recall about differential costs, which are the costs that would change on different alternatives. So that's why if they will be included and the managers will treat them as differential, so the performance reports will lead to poor decision making. So they are not like really traceable to these particular departments or managers. Then here are now the allocation methods and effects. So allocating actual cost based on actual use. This method is flawed. So this is now like the argument against it. It allocates actual costs rather than budgeted costs. If we are going to base the actual ones, then it passes the inefficiencies or efficiencies of one department to the next. Because supposedly there should have been comparison of the budgeted and the actual so that we will be able to know the variances. And the variances could now be like traced to who should be responsible. So normally if that is within the relevant range, so the employees that are in positions there or the employees who are having the responsibilities would explain if ever that would be beyond the relevant range, either lower or higher than the range, then that would be explained by the managers and we call that management by exception. So to continue, what is another explanation here? It allocates fixed costs based on use, actual use. So these are the explanations why this method is flawed or not favored. So we have the allocation example. One service department is maintenance and there are two operating departments, fabrication and assembly. So clearly from this sentence alone, we would know that fabrication and assembly would receive services from maintenance. So there are maintenance and repair services to be done in those departments, especially that there are machines and equipment involved. So here are the departments now and then budgeted hours of maintenance and the service used. So we have the totals. Then maintenance department cost for year. So variable and the actual. Then we also have the fixed and we have the totals. Okay. So allocation example, we use the actual cost and then the actual hours also or service used. So we get the $7.75 per hour for the actual per hour cost. Then our allocations then based on the 30,000 total multiplied by 7.75, where are we getting this amount? So this was from the previous example here. And then, so we get here the total maintenance cost as allocated. So that's it for our presentation. So hopefully you got the important points for this particular chapter. And then I'll see you next time for another learning sessions involving manager accounting. Thank you and God bless us all.